right, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Tracklandia. It's a show about racing and the people who do it best. I'm Jeff Merrill. And I'm Jeff Merrill. No, we're, we're not doing that this time. Oh, okay. All right, let's try that again. Right. I'm Jeff Merrill. And I'm not. All right, that's my thing, and we're not doing that this time, okay? It's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Point taken. Yeah. And I'm Andrew Weeding, and this is Tracklandia! Let's go! <laughs> So last time we met up, uh, we messed up a few things. And in the interest of doing a show with full transparency, we want to apologize for them. So just so you guys know, Patrick, Re Patrick Reeves and Jordan Welling tied for the win in the Teddy Twilight 10K in 3058 and not 3050. We, we are, are so, so sorry. Sorry. Also, the president of the Portland Track Group, our, our president, uh, Michael Bergman, is spelt with two N's, not one, which I messed that up. We are so, so sorry. So sorry. So sorry. Also, Eleanor Fulton beat Chris Derrick, Elliot Heath, and Scotty Olberding by one move in Scrabble and not handily. We, we are, are so, so sorry. sorry. Um, as much as to many disappointed fans, the IAAF will not be pairing with Dairy Queen. There will not be Jimmy Fallon pole vaulting on any sort of straws. So. We are so, we're so sorry, so sorry about that. For mentioning that. And also, so when we were talking to Eleanor about uh, spelling bees, uh, she misspelled American, and I missed a question about deep diving into what it means to be an American, which would have been really enjoyable for everybody. And we are so, so sorry, sorry about that. So sorry. Uh, also, we're also a little sorry about this. There it is. Yeah, there we go. A little sorry. We got a lot of good gazelle nors that were submitted after last, our last episode, and um, you know we're we are so sorry. We're so sorry about that. But to everybody who sent in a gazelle nor, thank you very much. These are delightful. Mm. And uh, we've got a great show tonight. Uh, you're a great audience. Carrie Dimoff is here. Craig Engels is here, and we're not sorry about not that. Not sorry at all. Let's go. Come yeah. on. How have you been, Andrew? No, I've been. Uh, you know, actually. I was kind of pissed, actually. I, I reached out to a friend I hadn't talked to in months, and I, I was like expecting this long, drawn-out conversation. I asked, hey, man, how you doing? He's like, oh, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks, man. Like, that was it. That's it. This is simple. It was good. That's it. I was, well, walked away kind of pissed after months of talk, not talking. So how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thanks. All right. In local news... The brewery Fatheads on Northwest 13th in the Pearl is being replaced by a brewery with a much fancier name, Von Ebert. Another reminder that the Euros are continuing their takeover of Portland without much resistance. The city's actually embracing this wholeheartedly. The Timbers Army chants are expected to have a subtle French accent starting about 2020. Yeah. And Portland City Council will vote on adding Swedish to the current road signs, which is expected to pass unanimously as most Americans get a good chuckle out of the word fart. It's bipartisan. It wafts across the aisle. Right. Uh, construction's been halted on Mount Sac Stadium, and with Hayward Field also getting an extreme stadium makeover, the 2020 trials location is in serious doubt. We have a few suggestions. One. Pick a random high school meet and have the top three finishers of each event represent the USA in Tokyo. Sydney McLaughlin did that. The United States is the land of opportunity. Give the kids a chance. It's the American dream. You know, America's got talent. Am I right? Yeah. All the USATF has to do is bring a medal stand and Howie Mandel to do this on the sidelines. I'd watch that meet. Yeah. Now you guys are all going to go watch America's Got Talent after this. Second... We, we know who won the first three, who got the first three spots in the last trials. In all, in all fairness, you know, equal opportunity, why not just go four, five, six? Yeah, go four, five, six down the list. That's a good idea. Right. I like that one. Third, randomly select ten track meets and throw them into a hat. Oh, 
But what if we took five of those out? Then throw those five meats into one of those bingo twirling machines and pull three out. Take those three, put little bits of ham on them, release a dog. Takes one of those, throw that one out, down to two. Bring in an octopus, and then whichever one he picks is going to be the location for the next eight Olympic cycles. Hello, Sheboygan, 2052. <laughs> See you all there. <laughs> in other news. A free-range parenting law in Utah has passed. The law, according to a New York Times article, will allow parents to let their kids play unsupervised in a park or walk home from school alone. This will, of course, allow Olympic hopefuls training for 2032, the freedom to build their aerobic system in tra on training loops larger than 40 feet in their backyard. <laughs> Is it even altitude training if they get that far down? That's pretty deep. I guess not. Speaking of young stars, high school sophomore Cruz Culpepper, son of former distance running greats Alan and Shane Culpepper, won the mile at Arcadia last week. He closed in 56 seconds to run 413. <laughs> Can you imagine what it would have been if he ran 56 for all four laps? It's 346. Oh, American record holder Alan Webb. <laughs> He runs 346. He's done that. The Commonwealth Games are taking place. The games are being held in Gold Coast, Australia, and the Aussies really know how to host a meet. The turnouts in the stands are massive, but in fairness, kangaroo pouches. Mohamed of the Bowerman Track Club came second in the 5,000 meters. Castor Semenya won the gold in the 1,500 in a new South African record, 4 flat .71. Speedy. Very quick. And Aisha Pratt Lear took the gold for Team Jamaica in the women's 3,000 steeplechase. When was the last time a Jamaican distance runner won anything? I don't know the answer to that. And that's why it's so impressive. Yeah. A couple 10 mile races took place on opposite coasts Sacktown and Cherry Blossom. Uh, the man with the rock star name, Sid Bond Jr., won the men's race, and Jane Kabi won the women's race in Sacramento. And in Washington, D.C., Jamal Yimmer won the men's race in 46-17, and Boozy, Boozy? I think it's Boozy, yeah. Boozy, Boozy Dariba continued her winning ways on the women's side in 53-45. Oh, and shout out to Chris Derrick of the Bowerman Track Club, who's sitting right there, who came fifth, fifth, our top American. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, Chris. Appreciate it. You're the man. Stanford invite results. Uh, Nigel Amos ripped a big, uh, a big opener. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to take we'll that, that again. again? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Amos ripped a big one. Yeah. <laughs> Nigel Amos ripped a big opener in 144.5. Peter Callahan took the dub in the 1500 run 338, looking silky smooth down that home stretch. And uh, Gwen Jorgensen, the gold medalist in the Olympic triathlon, retired last year to embark on her three-year journey to win the gold medal in the Olympic marathon, uh, much like Andrew, who retired to look incredibly good-looking in comparison, sitting next to a no-name co-host on a niche track comedy show based in Portland, Oregon. But back to the track. The Stanford 10K was billed as a matchup between Bowerman Track Club pro Jorgensen and multiple-time national champ Carissa Schweitzer from Missouri, uh, who both did very well, by the way, with Jorgensen clocking 31.55 and a new personal best, and Schweitzer clocking the number nine collegiate 10K ever 